Alright, so I think I got way too many racing wheels, but well, what's up guys, Steven here, welcome back to another review, and today we're going to check out the Thrustmaster TMX racing wheel. So I would say, let's get directly started. And there we go guys, here's the TMX racing wheel from Thrustmaster. And basically this racing wheel is the cheap entry level racing wheel for the Xbox One. Because if you have seen my review of the T150, then you will see it's actually the same racing wheel, but the T150 was for PS3, PS4 and PC, while the TMX now is for Xbox One and PC. Both of them work fine on the computer and they're very similar. So regarding the force feedback, absolutely the same. I guess also the internals are the same, power supply, everything. And yeah, the force feedback feels the same. The racing wheel, it's actually the same, 11 inches on the diameter. And yeah, you just have the Xbox One controller layout on the racing wheel on the TMX and you have the PlayStation um, controller layout on the T150. But I have to say it's pretty cool because it's fully compatible with the Xbox One. You start a race, a game, a racing wheel game, and then you immediately see um, the Thrustmaster TMX popping up as supported input. And it works in the menu, it works everywhere. We have tested it with Dirt, um, yeah, Formula One, and we've also tested it with Forza and everything worked pretty fine. You will later see some footage of us playing. So what's now the difference? If you want to get it for a computer, well, um, the T150 offers 1080 degrees of um, yeah, rotation angle, while this one here for the Xbox One offers 900 degrees of rotation angle. So it has 12-bit um, resolution, and as I've told you, both are fine compatible with PC, you just have to download the correct drivers. Both of them um, are compatible with the TH8A shifter from Thrustmaster and the pedals, they're both the same. You can even um, yeah, exchange them. So the T150 pedals are working here on the TMX pedals. All right, so the price tag. Now I'm a huge Logitech fanboy. So I have here the G920 and I have to say, I absolutely love it because um, it's compatible with the G27 shifter and I like to have a clutch. But well, as you know, there are other racing wheels and they just come with a throttle and a brake pedal, while for instance the G920 comes with a free pedal set. Now for the Thrustmasters, you can also buy an add-on, so it's a free pedal set and you can also buy the external shifter, but then it can also get pretty expensive. So while this is why I um, pretty much love my G920, because um, I still have the shifter from the G27 and it works really fine. All right, so that regarding the specs and all that crap, so let's check out what we can find inside the package. Just keep in mind, this is the 220 to 240 volt version and if you ordered online make sure you order the correct version for your country all right guys and i would say let's check out what we can find inside now here it is guys the tmx and here the t150 so well don't mind the microphone i'm waiting for my new wireless mics and yeah i have to do it like this because it also needs a lot of space all right so what you can find inside the package is a user manual this one here is pretty thick and explains everything pretty well um, just something I want to mention because I did read comments that um, some people did put the um, connector here from the pedals into the Ethernet port of the PlayStation. Even though it looks like an Ethernet cable, don't do this because it's probably hard to get it out and then you will break it. So, no, don't do it. Alright, um, then here we have the racing wheel. So here the base, as you can see, it comes here in one piece. You don't have to assemble anything. Now it has um, this clamp mount and yeah, there are not those threads to mount it on a racing simula simulator seat for instance, but um, this clamp works perfectly fine on any plate. All right, so regarding the pedals, now the pedals have those um, threads here on the bottom side, so you can basically mount it on every simulator setup. Now the brake pedal, it's not so stiff like on my G920, but I think this is a good thing because on the G920 it's really too stiff for me. So if you play without a fixed setup, then this really sucks. But here on the TMX, the resistance is actually perfectly nice. So the throttle also um, has a good resistance and the brake too. So you just have to experience that on your own. Now the pedals, they feel really cheap because everything here made out of plastic and we just have those rubber pads here on the bottom side. So not so super nice like on the G920, but does the job perfectly fine. So let's compare the base here. So the steering wheel has the same diameter, looks actually the same, has rubber also here. And um, just if you check out the TMX, it has an Xbox One, an Xbox controller layout on, yeah, um, on the steering wheel. We have here in the middle the logo, um, here we have the buttons, we have the right bumpers, left bumpers, A, B, Y and X colored and also those buttons feel pretty good to press, they have a nice resistance, so I'm pretty happy with that. 
Now regarding um, rotation, force feedback, the resistance was, was actually pretty good and the force feedback not noisy like on my old G27, so that felt pretty good. We have here also an Xbox button and here we have a mode button to switch between uh, modes like for instance to use it on the computer. Alright, so regarding the ports, now the ports are actually the same. So we have that Ethernet looking port for the pedals, we have another port and yeah, you have a cable which comes out of yeah, um, of the base here, which goes directly to your power socket, so there's no external power supply. The pedal shifters, they're made out of metal and very good material actually, so both the same here. Maybe looks a little bit thinner on the TMX than on my T150 here, but resistance feels also pretty good, maybe a little bit less on the TMX, but I guess it's um, probably the same or just a different revision. All right, so that's the PlayStation model, but as you can see, um, also the steering wheel here, plastic on the top and bottom and rubber here on the outside to get a better grip. And yeah, Thrustmaster logo here on the bottom side, we just have the mount for the clamp. This is pretty easy to do, so just put the clamp in there and then you can mount it on basically any surface. So I'll mount it on my desk right over there so we can test it out. All right guys, so this is basically it. Now you know how it looks, how it feels. So actually for the price, this is a pretty good quality product because if you keep in mind, you can buy two TMX for one G920. Now I would say, let's drive a little bit and let's talk about my experience while driving on the Xbox One. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're now here in Forza 5 and the steering wheel works perfectly fine. So as you can see, I can use the D-pad, I can use all the buttons, and if I go here to controller, I can switch the layout. So in every game in the Xbox home menus, if you press, if you press the Xbox button, you can use the D-pad and control everything. So you don't need a controller anymore, you can really just use the racing wheel. Um, yeah, please don't add this account if you also play Forza 5 because this is not my main account So this is just my test account and yeah, um, there we go. So controller works everything perfectly fine So let's jump directly into free play and let's check out how the performance is So guys, let's do it. Let's start the race BMW M5. That's my dream car I hope one day I can afford um, that car or at least something like that and not drive in an Opel But I would say yeah, let's just go and let's do this and I hope the first, yeah, first gear is in, and there we go, that was too much wheel spin. And, alright, so just check out here the force feedback, I mean, let's crash into the F40 or whatever that thing here is. Oh, the force feedback is actually kind of strong, not as strong as on my G27, I think, but um, it's not really noisy, it's totally quiet, and that's pretty good. So I guess also the lifetime on that racing wheel will be really good. So let's do this. Oh, holy crap. The force feedback really kicks in at maximum percent. So I'm um, 100 and there we go. Well, it feels totally different to just play with throttle and brake. So usually I play with the clutch and this is absolutely awkward right now. But well, I have to say, um, I'm pretty happy. The grip is nice. Um, the pedal shifters are working fine. I mean, just check this out. There we go, let's shift working really nice and also the force feedback feels really okay so let's drive and I would say I will quit talking because I talk way too much usually so now just some music and I will try to win this race so let's go guys
All right, guys, so we're now here at the end of this review, and here comes my final conclusion about the Frostmaster TMX. So this is a great entry-level racing wheel. So it's probably a bit more expensive than the very cheap ones, but um, it has force feedback, great build quality, and I have to say, I was looking for something like that um, since the Frostmaster T150 got released for the PlayStation because I was a huge fan of that one. All right, so I forgot something to mention about the pedals. The pedals um, have also a pretty good stand. They're not sliding around on the ground, as you've probably seen. And that's also very important for me because I don't have a racing seat setup yet. But I'm going to check out um, some racing simulator setups. So make sure you subscribe that you don't miss any future reviews. So you can get it from Amazon for around $1.99. So make sure you check out the link down below in the description. And I can just say, um, good job, Frostmaster, for providing us a cheap alternative with great build quality. Alright, thanks for watching guys, have a nice day and see you very soon in the next review.